Joe, I don't know if you are as hungry as I am, but we've got something super special at the Electro Food Series. Was that your attempt at doing some sort of food-related pun? So yes, we have uh, got the entire Dan Electro food series of pedals. If you're not uh, familiar with uh, the range of pedals, th this is them. They look a bit like this. You've probably seen them around because they're they're in like you can pick them up for like no money yep. in in most sort of decent reputable secondhand guitar stores. Um, and yeah, they're just wonderful little coloured boxes of joy. What a wicked looking collection of pedals. Okay, so they're like, they are plastic chassis, but you know, don't let that fool you. This is a really super cool range of pedals. And, and it's kind of, I, I didn't realise there were so many in the range. It sort of passed me by. Nor did I. I suppose a little bit of back history to how we came about having the collection. About a year and a half ago, I decided that I would live out some nostalgia by going back to these pedals. There was a music shop back in my hometown when I was a kid, and these were sold in little blister packs behind the counter. Occasionally they had them in the window, and I never actually bought one. And this was like 17 years ago. And then they always came up on eBay, and I'm a massive fan of kind of buying on eBay. So I bought one, and I was like, do you know what? This would make a great video if I can buy all of them. <laughs> and it's taken a year and a half, because actually it was a fairly like chunky outlay. Well, this is it. Know? There are some that are quite rare. And what's what's weird about that is they kind of put the whole series out. For, for, for the best that you and I can work out, they put all of these pedals yep. out roughly at the same time. Um, but some of them certainly have been rarer than others. What was the hardest one? The hardest to one to find was the one that, that took the longest for... Uh, a while was the chicken salad um, vibrato. 1999. That was a long Vintage. Time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah, back when you walked in a guitar store, no one had heard of the word boutique, and you could basically buy Boss, MXR, Electro Harmonics, or, uh, or you could buy these guys. That Electro! <laughs> um, but Dan Electra had a massive range of pedals out and they were all super wacky at the time. And yeah, they just decided to release 21 pedals. Well, 20, 20 pedals and... Yeah, the bacon and eggs. Which is an amplifier. Yeah. <laughs> and distortion pedal, uh, depending yeah. on whether you plug the, uh, the output so in. Good. If you unplug the output, it becomes a mini amp. Um, and actually, technically, there were two different tuners, a C to C and an E to E. Um, I don't even know if seven string guitars were really a massive thing at that point, 1999, <laughs> so probably ahead of the game. So what have we got? We've got well, so, so a the, bunch of random effects. Really, and really like random names with on all of these. Well, so they start off quite well, because they start off like, you know, tuna melt tremolo, okay. But why didn't you use tuna for the tuna? Well, yeah, I mean, we did discuss that. Surely that would have, should have been the tuna. Right. I think, actually, this was called... This came later. I think this was called the blueberry. Right. Which doesn't make any sense. No. Well, none of them make any sense. This is, this is a BLT. And what, you know, I we, like the BLT, so we're talking about a bacon, lettuce, Less, tomato, tomato sandwich. Yeah. So what what type of effect does that? Like, well, it you know, it conjures you, up the idea of a slap back echo, of course. <laughs> exactly, which is or, what it is. Or, you know, if you're down by the seaside, you know, in sunny Brighton, where we kind of hail from, you go, fancy some fish and chips. And I also want a seven-band EQ. What is fish and chips <laughs> a seven-band EQ? But... 
The, some of these are like revered hidden gem tone tools. Well, this is it. Like some of these are super cool. Like the Rocky Road. That was one of the hardest ones to find. Actually, that came um, from China. Someone actually managed to find one in a store, new old stock in China for that one, um, and kindly sent it to us. So that's a that's a, like a Leslie simulator. Yeah. Which, which is a rare enough effect to try and find like anyone doing. Yeah. Um, Let alone for sort of probably, you know, 20 quid stroke dollars. See, I, I don't know at the time if Behringer were a thing in terms of like compact pedals yeah. at that point. So I guess these were like... These were like I, entry level. But they're entry level with style. I mean, look at these. They've gone for that classic like 50s... Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was Dano's thing, wasn't it? Thing. It was like, um, you know, we're... A, Cool. Well, Dan Electro since 1947. They were that kind of retro band and have always sort of lived on that sort of styling. So, like, they had the wah pedal that looked like a Cadillac and, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we've been plugging them in over the course of the last 18 months, and obviously, we've got some sound demos for you today. And some of them are just so unbelievably good, and some of them are so unbelievably terrible. <laughs> The grilled cheese. This thing, unfortunately, sounds like you'd plugged in a grilled cheese sandwich. I mean, yeah. That, a distortion control bad. with no gain and just a resonance. <laughs> the pastrami, I thought, was especially bad because when we when we turned this on, it sounded like we turned all the like, like we turned the tone control off. Yeah. Uh, of the guitar, so I was like, looked at the pedal, thinking, oh, you know, the tone's probably down. We'll just bring in some treble, but. There's no tone control on yeah. this. So that is just the way it sounds. And then you've got um, the black coffee oh, metal distortion. Probably the only appropriately named pedal. Yeah, that like, kind that of makes sense. sense. Like if you coffee, saw that, you go... metal, yeah. yeah. But no gain control, once again, a set amount of gain. Um, but actually, Because there's a black licorice as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I guess we'll get into that because there's a couple of key ones like that that actually sound really good and I think are definitely are kind of sort of hidden gems that are worth going out to find. I, th I think the only uh, shame with these now is if you want to put them on your board, as you said, they are a plastic chassis. They've got a kind of plastic button. They've got this nice little like guard for the controls, which is kind of <laughs> cool at the time. Um, that is so cool. Oh. But they're unfortunately, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily, they were like super gig worthy, <laughs> but there's, some of them are so easy to find and definitely worth having that I think you could probably stomp your way through a few and you'd still be happy to pick up the occasional yeah. one. Did we say like the Chili Dog is a, a bit like an OC2. Yeah, yeah, so it's just like analog octave. And it tracks really well, like even the second octave down. And again, these are 20 quid. Yeah, know, that's, that's they come up on cool. eBay all the time. So Definitely these are, look these out are for like. A chili dog. I might get one.
But it was actually like... It's like a little Dan Electro board. Yeah. I mean, you know... So did, you get the little patch oh. cables and everything. Oh, did they come with it? Yeah. So it was like a gig-ready board. So you actually bought... You could buy five. You think you could buy the board on its own. Because who does that? And Moore do that now, don't they? Yeah, they there's a lot of companies sort of do that. But I think you, at the time you could buy the board on its own and it came with the cables and the leads. Or you could buy them in like a triple set and you've got three with two spaces to fill out. Um, and then they gave them like How funny, do they fit? They just like kind of click in. They click in? Yeah, they kind of just like push in. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I don't know how well they work with the guards, yeah. but there you go. Oh, yeah, it worked better with the guard, I think. That's cool. So, yeah, you could buy them as packs. And actually, I've got one here. They did these like mini box sets. So this, this is great. The Summer of Love. I love that they're themed. They've like, they've, They've come up with four pedals that they, they think you can achieve yeah, I suppose, like a type of sound with. I'm f I can't believe I actually managed to find this basically new in box. That's like... Um, the pedals were still in their like little plastic bags. Yeah, we amazing. I th I, apparently, um, the guy I got this off said that his friend gave it to him after he bought it uh, in about 2000 and he never actually plugged any of them in. It's so good. Um, what did you get in that set? So in this one, because they say it includes the rich harmonic effects that defined the music of a groovy generation, <laughs> the 60s, um, octave fuzz, phaser, uh, octave, low octave, and a tuner, because tuners defines the... Pedal tuners didn't even in, <laughs> were in, weren't even invented in the 60s. In the 60s. Right. Um, but, of course, you need to stay in tune. But they also did a molten metal, so I'm actually on the hunt for the molten metal. Molten metal, so there was a metal series. There what, was a metal series Do you know what was well. in it? I mean, I, I assume the black coffee. I think the black coffee or the black licorice. Um, I think maybe the PB and J or maybe the EQ. I can't remember exactly, but that that's been really hard to find. So I was super chuffed to find that in the box as well. What an amazing little bit yeah. of kit.
Do you have any of the Dan Electro food series? And um, if you do, what do you use them for? Let us know in the comments below. Indeed, and if there's anything else that you'd like us to review, look at, check out, if there's anything you want to send us, comments are where you tell us. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Guitar Nerds videos coming soon. And we'll see you very soon. What's your favorite one? Oh, the tuna. <laughs>